Okay, we're gonna talk about my favorite hacks for stabilizing your blood sugar. And I've done a lot of videos on blood sugar. Uh, you know, everything I taught you all in Fast Like a Girl was really about improving this metabolic switch, specifically for women, although there were a lot of great uh, hacks in there for men as well. And so on this video, I just wanna dive into some really easy hacks. You know, it's, it's interesting to me that we sort of live in this moment in history where we, everybody is having a metabolic challenge. And yet when you look at what brings you back into metabolic balance, it's actually fairly simple. So I've been asking myself a lot of like, what is contributing to the metabolic mess that we're in? And of course it's quality of food. And, and we've, I've talked about this here on this channel, a lot about how the chemicals that are being poured into food are absolutely creating us a, a, an obese society specifically chemicals that are known as obesogens that are actually reprogrammed stem cells. They actually, the chemical, when it, you are exposed to it over and over again, will reprogram reprog your stem cells to make fat cells. So th this is part of why we have this huge obesity crisis going on in, in our world. And yet we have a food system that profits from us eating these toxic addictive foods. So with that in mind, we got to come over here and go, okay, what can I do to bring metabolic balance back to myself? And that's where these three hacks really come in handy. And I just, I, I really want to make it as simple as possible for you. So here we go. Are you ready? Okay. Hack number one, I say it over and over again, I can't say it enough, but it's fiber, 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 fiber. So one of my favorite interviews that I did on the Resetter podcast this year was with the glucose goddess. We talked about glucose and balancing glucose and her number one hack was fiber. And I love the way she explains this, that it's like a, fiber acts like a net so that when glucose comes into the system, the fiber slows that glucose down. Now, if that glucose is slowed down, the spike of glucose is slowed down, that means the pancreas doesn't have to work as hard to make the hormone insulin. So then, A, the, you don't burn your pancreas out, and B, you don't flood the system with insulin and become insulin resistant. So when we put fiber into the equation before the meal, this is really the important part. It's like the best thing you could do with every single meal is have some green salad with it right before the meal and then have the meal. And it's like you've given yourself a glucose, a blood sugar um, uh, balancer ahead of that meal. So it's funny to me that we like often will go down like, give me berberine or apple cider vinegar or some of these things to stabilize our blood sugar, all great hacks. But how about we start with just having a salad with every meal? I saw a really interesting post on one of my socials about a month ago where a man committed to just eating a salad with every meal and uh, every, every meal he had for 30 days and he lost like 10 pounds, 10, 15 pounds just doing that. That's the power of fiber. So, and it's easy, like this is a mix that I got at my local store um, and it's just really easy just to throw it in a salad. Sometimes I'll put just some olive oil and lemon on it, um, but it, it's one of those go-tos that, that should be incredible. Now, I wanna talk about different sources of fiber because it does, if you're like, oh, I hate salads, there's some other things that you can lead into that are fiber-filled. So green vegetables, low-sugared fruits, so be sure you go and watch the video I did on the fruits that help you burn fat. Nuts, lentils, beans, chickpeas, um, oats, just make sure it's not like uh, highly processed oats, you don't want quick oats. Sweet potatoes, tell me if you watched the cooking show I did with Leanne Rhymes where we showed two of her favorite sweet potato recipes. So if you're looking for creative ways to make sweet potatoes, you can go back and watch that. And squash. Squash, my favorite is butternut squash. Put it in the notes if you love butternut squash as well. But what we really need to start to think about when we eat is we so often lead with our taste buds, but it's the microbiome that is gonna, gonna control your blood sugar levels. So if we keep the microbiome in this conversation uh, in our head as to what do I want, 
for to eat to, for dinner tonight, instead of asking what your taste buds want, how about we also look at what our microbiome might want? So fiber-filled foods are not just breaking, making it easier for the glucose and insulin response, but they're also helping support the bacteria that break down estrogen. They also will help send signals to the liver as to how easily it can metabolically flex into a fat burner place. So it's, it is truly this miraculous food that we have just pushed away. And when we look at the highly processed foods that are killing everybody right now, they are devoid of fiber. So make sure you understand fiber, you're bringing fiber back into your meals and that you're, you're eating it whether you want to or not. I don't, some people don't crave a salad. Well, you eat it anyways. I, it, it's that powerful. Okay, number two. And I've been talking about this one. A lot of people have been talking about this one and it's lifting weights. Ooh, this one's heavy. So here's what's interesting about lifting weights is that the more muscle you have, the more insulin receptor sites you have. And I wanna put, I'm gonna put all of this together in a picture for you. So hang in here with me. So building muscle absolutely makes it so that you are able to, to take care of the glucose from your food and you're able to get that in to the cells so they can use them for energy and not stored as fat. Now, what's interesting about when I went to go research for this video, there was some interesting things I found about when you should be lifting muscle or uh, lifting weights. And so here's, what, here's a couple of things that I found. So first, a 2019 study found that working out in the afternoon stabilizes blood sugar more than working out in the morning. So again, you have to remember that a lot of times we hit that dip in the afternoon because we've been eating more often. And so our glucose is high, insulin is doing its job. So you come in and lift weights and you force that glucose to go into the muscles and use it for the, the workout as opposed to it being stored as fat or giving you food coma or giving you uh, a, an inflamed brain um, and tanking your energy. So I think it's really cool that we could maybe do weightlifting in the afternoon to improve the blood sugar control. Um, and that's just from blood sugar. It's not from a lifting weight standpoint. Um, the other thing that we're finding is that research shows that working out in general, exercise in general, makes you more insulin sensitive. So I'll think about it in this context. So when we're looking at this metabolic switch, we know there are many factors that are going to make sure this switch works effortlessly for you. Fiber helps with the glucose response so that you don't have as big, that you can get over the fasting window faster. And weightlifting and building muscle helps you utilize the glucose you're making. So this one minimizes glucose, this one helps you utilize glucose, which takes me to my third hack, which is fasting, intermittent fasting, lets you go after the glucose that you stored years ago. So do you see how this fits into a complete picture? This is not like eat more fiber and your life is gonna change. This is let's put this all in the context of a fasting lifestyle. So many of you have already seen the benefits of weight loss from fasting. But there, again, I always love to bring you the study. And here was a 2022 study that I actually didn't write about in Fast Like a Girl, so I, I wanted to bring it to you here. And it's basically a meta-analysis, which a meta-analysis means they looked at a lot of different studies. And what they concluded was that intermittent fasting caused dramatic improvements to blood sugar control, even in people with insulin resistance who have struggled to maintain healthy glucose, blood glucose. Okay, so how does something as simple as not eating for, and they, they went on to say it was about 14 hours. Everybody wants to know the fasting length, but around when you don't eat for 14 hours, what is going on in your body? And what's interesting about that question is that you will, what the body has to do in the absence of food is it has to find where it stored glucose years ago. So it finds it in the belly, it finds it in the chest, it finds it in the booty, like the areas you're trying to drop weight. When we go and start to hit that 14 hour mark, or you can go longer, I, I'm a big fan of longer fast, you're going after stored sugar. So again, let's put this in a system. 
We're using fiber to minimize the glucose. We're using weight, the weights and strength training to create more opportunities to use the glucose. And we're fasting so that we can go after the glucose we stored years ago. So it becomes this complete system. So those of you that have been fasting and you're like, I'm still not losing weight. My question to you is, are you lifting weights and maybe do it in the afternoon? And are you eating more fiber? And to the person who's lifting weights and eating fiber, but not fasting, and it is uh, dealing with stubborn weight, uh, uh, belly weight usually is, is one of those uh, stubborn, most stubborn places. I'm gonna ask, how about you just take all of your good eating and you start to put it into a um, specific eating window, leaving longer for fasting. Okay, I gotta interrupt this video because I have a free guide for you so you can master fasting. It's called a beginner's guide to a fasting lifestyle. And all you've gotta do is click here and you can jump right in. So something, I'm just gonna bring up something really interesting that I'm seeing on socials and some of you may be seeing this is that fasting has gotten so much momentum, so many people are losing weight with it, that anything that becomes trendy all of a sudden starts getting the haters or people that say, oh, it didn't work for me, and they start to tell you the way that worked for them, and they start to sell you their product and, and, and want you down their path. So I'm not here to tell you how to think from me. Um, I'm here to show you how your body works, I'm here to show you a more complete system than just do this and your life will change. So when we're looking at our fasting lifestyle, we have to bring fiber into the eating window. We've got to make sure we're lifting heavy weights and we got to make sure that we're tacking on periodically. I'm, I'm a big fan of cycling fasting that we tack on periodically these fasting windows and we use these all as tools. And I'll finish with this example. And this is something I've been sharing with my Reset Academy recently. And that is that when you look at a toolbox, you open that toolbox and you look in it and you're like, all these tools are necessary. So if you looked in the toolbox and you pulled out a hammer and you pulled out a screwdriver, you would never look at the hammer and go, oh, the hammer is better than the screwdriver you would say, what tool do I need right now to accomplish what's in front of me? They have equal value. So the same thing with fasting, with fiber, with gaining muscle, they all have value. And so sometimes you pull out the extra fiber. I like pulling out the fiber when you can't get the blood sugar to come down with each meal. If you're having a really long, what they call a postprandial response, I like to bring in the fiber to like help people have a less of a glucose spike. I like to bring in the muscle for the woman who's just really struggling to get over into the fat burning state. So we got to We got to bring in more resources to build muscle um, so that we can be able to be more insulin sensitive. And I like fasting for all the healing benefits I've, I've mentioned here, but also since we're on the topic of weight loss, I really like it for going after that, that stubborn weight. All of these should be cycled. All of these have, re have a p an upside. None of these are gonna be the cure-all. It's when you put it together in one lifestyle. So please, I'm gonna encourage you, and what I'm really trying to do here on my YouTube channel is teach you how to think this through and so that you customize the right lifestyle for you. And when you're on social media and somebody says, intermittent fasting didn't work for me, this did, you have to understand that what that person found was a lifestyle that was unique to them. There may be a tool in there you can find and you can come over here and use one of their tools, but the name of the game with health is to find the system that works for you and let's pull all the tools into the, into the equation. The protein tool, the workout tool, the fiber tool, the fasting tool, the supplement tool, the sleep tool, the circadian rhythm tool, all these tools need to be brought into your lifestyle so you can live in a coherent body that isn't living in this, isn't dysregulated from all of the poor food and the bad, all the stress that you are bringing yourself back into balance and loving the body you're living in. Does that help? I really, this is a huge pet peeve of mine right now that we have uh, the fighting going on of like, this didn't work, that did. And it leads all of you to be confused. And I want to bring everybody in the conversation and find the right path for you. Put in the comments if that helps. 
I'd also love in the comments, what have you noticed? What tools are working for you? Maybe fiber work great for you. Give us a story. Maybe lifting weights work great for you. Tell me your story. Maybe fasting was like a miracle for you. Tell me your story because that way we can see how all these tools work differently. And those of you listening to this can customize the right lifestyle for you. As always, I hope that helps. Okay, you're not losing belly fat, I get it. Watch this video so you know exactly how to get rid of your belly fat. So I really want you to remember that cortisol and belly fat, those go hand in hand. So as your belly is growing, it's not always diet related. It can also be stress related. 